Think it's not possible to make a $20 NAS? It's possible. It's obviously not amazing, but it gets the job done storing files and serving media. I designed a case to go around the SSD, SATA to USB adapter and Orange Pi Zero. And I converted the power to USB-C and left that dangling out for the time being until I make the final touches on the design. But so far, it works for me. Measuring about 175 millimeters by 80 millimeters, or about 7 by 3 inches, it's not very big. And I think you'll be surprised by the performance for about 20 bucks. And if it's the bed of most 3D printers. My hope for this video is to make you think outside the box and inspire you to try something different. Obviously, if you have or are in the market for a premium NAS solution like a Synology or QNAP, this video is not for you. This video is for a techie or maybe a frugal tinkerer who may not realize you can make a very simple and cheap network attached storage yourself. So let's open it up and see what's inside. I just have to slide it down and pop it off. As you can see, there's three major pieces here. The SSD, the SATA to USB adapter, and the Orange Pi Zero. I'm not advocating for the Orange Pi Zero, which I got for 16 bucks, especially now that it's dated with its ARM A7 CPU, 512 megabytes of RAM, and 100 megabit Ethernet. But the Orange Pi Zero and Zero 2 have something special. Two internal USB headers. Not those weird pads like on the Raspberry Pi Zero, but a header that's super easy to connect to. The SATA to USB adapter can be had for 4 to $6, and that's USB 3, by the way. Even though the Orange Pi Zero doesn't have USB 3, I got it anyway, as it's one cable, and I don't have any problems powering the drive this way. Let's look underneath, and you'll see I left room for the cables. I have a 250 gigabyte Samsung Evo available, so I'll be using that for today's test. I probably would only use SSDs in a setup like this due to the power requirements of spinning 2.5 inch drives. So let's find out what the Orange Pi Zero is capable of. First test is iPerf 3, and as you can see, it's almost able to fill that 100 megabit connection fully, which is really good. So no problems here. The second test is just a regular HTTP download. I'm going to download Big Buck Bunny in 4K, which is about 600 megabytes. As you can see, it's able to sustain at least 11 megabytes or about 88 megabits the whole time which in my opinion is not slow. Obviously, if you have 100 gigabyte files, I think you'll have problems here, but for the normal person, this is quite good and acceptable. For the streaming media test, we'll be using Kodi. And so let's go ahead and connect to the NAS. And as you can see, I have a few files here. I have Big Book Bunny in 1080p, 4K, and I have the very famous jellyfish test in 40, 60, and 80 megabits per second. So let's try Big Buck Bunny in 1080p first. And let's skip around a little bit. And as you can see, it's having no problems buffering that. So let's jump to 4K. And let's skip around. And as you can see, it's also not having any problems skipping around. So let's start with the first 40 megabit jellyfish test. And as you can see, the buffer is filling quite nicely. It's way ahead. So let's jump to 60 megabits per second. And you can see the buffer is getting way ahead and has no problems streaming this at all. Now if the video seems jerky or stuttery it's because of the way it's been recorded on my computer. When you actually stream it it does it looks totally smooth. So let's go to 80 80 megabits and no problem buffering. It's getting way ahead it's staying ahead of the play marker. For the final test, let's uh, use Samba and let's connect to the Orange Pi Zero. And as you can see, it shows up on the network. I can log into it. So let's copy a file over. And it's about 250 megabytes. Does a pretty good job around 10 megabytes per second, which is not really that bad, or 80 megabits. 
So it's using that 100 megabit connection pretty well. And it's going to finish up in just a second. And there it is. So let's test uh, Big Buck Bunny. Let's just bring it over to the computer and download it. Let's see what it, how it performs. As you can see, it's very similar performance to the HTTP test at 11 megabytes per second. So at least 88 megabits. And I think it's doing a pretty good job just reading that file and copying it to the computer. Okay. And can we watch videos? Of course we can. So let's skip around. And it's just like we're watching it on our own computer. And that's pretty good. So that's it. The cool thing is that we can stream videos to Kodi or Jellyfin and use it to back up files all at the same time. It's amazing what you can do for $20. And if you were to increase your budget just a little, you could upgrade to say a Raspberry Pi 4, if you could ever get one, or an Orange Pi Zero 2, which adds gigabit ethernet. And speaking of the Orange Pi Zero 2, I just received one today and plan to do the same test and we'll see what the limits are. Maybe we can get Jellyfin running on it. I don't know. I'll find out though. If you made it this far, thank you for spending your time with me. I hope this was insightful and useful to you as it was to me. Like, share, and subscribe if you want. But most of all, comment down below. I want to hear your thoughts on this, good or bad. Have a great one.